Open with me to Gospel book of Mark, chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 44. It's a very familiar pa passage to everyone which is uh, recorded at our Lord Jesus Christ feed the multitude. Mark 6, verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate, desolated place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had, to, they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a desol desolated place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a des desolated place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to sit down in groups of, on the gr a green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to sit, to set before the people. And he delivered the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took, took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who, were, who ate the loaves were 500 men. 5,000 men. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to get up here. Um, when I was little, uh, I heard a story about a Chinese pastor in uh, Penang, Malaysia. This Pastor Wong, who, whose house in a, is in a very interesting place. On the left-hand side, there was a, a prison. On the right-hand side was a hospital. And across the road, there's a, a funeral service place. So you see all the people walk past. Either they're going to the prison or the hospital or went for the funeral service. So he's, he thought this is a good opportunity to share the gospel. So he put up the big sign in front of his house. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. After he put up, his wife found it and rushed to, to, to tell him, you'd better take it off. If come, pe people come in, in five and in, in a few handful, you'd probably be able to feed them. What if they all come? So Pastor Wong said, don't worry, I put another word above that. Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. There are many miracles recorded by uh, disciples, by Lord's disciples. Matthew, uh, some recorded by Mark, some recorded by Luke. But only two miracles recorded by all four of them. This one, the, the, the story we just read, 
Jesus fed the multitude is one of them. And the next one was Jesus' resurrection. So today we're going to study this passage, not from the angle to see how Lord has fed the multitude. We're going to study this same chapter and to learn from a disciple's aspect and see what we can learn from it. Give them something to eat. Firstly, this is a command from Jesus Christ. A command from Jesus Christ which reflects his compassion. The uh, Bible verse we just read, Jesus saw a large crowd. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without, sh without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. The question we need to ask is what does the Bible say about compassion? The Hebrew and Greek words translate into the English Bible compassion, this word. It means to have mercy, to feel sympathy, and to have pity. In particular, this reflects the divine attributes. We know that according from the Bible, God is, our God is a merciful God. And from many places it's translated compassion. God is a compassion, merciful God, and gracious God. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Like all of God's attributes, His compassion is infinite and eternal. His compassion never fails. Uh, his compassion, His mercy are new every morning. So when Jesus saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. But from a disciple's point of view, they want to send these people away. They came to Jesus and asked the Lord, Lord, please send them away. To ask them to go to the surrounding villages and places to get something to eat. Because here is a desolate place. But Jesus told his disciples, give them something to eat. Not only that, he said, you give them something to eat. What? We give them something to eat. What do we have? Well, if uh, a few people come to me, come to my house, maybe... By God's grace, maybe I'll be able to host. But if tens and hundreds of people come to any one of us, it's not easy at all. With the, the, the scripture we just read, the men, 5,000 men, and altogether, including the children and women, probably a couple of thousand, uh, 20,000 maybe, or 15,000. Interestingly, in the Gospel book of uh, John, one of, the one of his disciples, Andrew Simon, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to the Lord, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. What, what are they for so many? Another translation says, But how far will they go? Among so many. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. This command is reflecting, it reflects the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The compassion in original Greek is the word for your internal organ. It reflects Jesus' felt in his gut. He felt pain where you're, when you feel pain. Jesus feels pain when we feel pain. When we feel pain and, and anxiety. Dr. MacArthur has a comment like this. I quote, 
The message is, I have compassion on your pain and I also have compassion on your soul. I have compassion on your need for rest, but I'm, also, uh, but I'm more concerned about your spiritual rest. I'm concerned that you get physical rest, but more that you get spiritual rest. I'm concerned that you have physical pain, but more important, I'm concerned of, of, our, of your spiritual suffering. I can not only hear your body, if you come to me, I'll heal your soul. I can not only give you physical rest, I can be the source of your everlasting rest. End quote. Three of the Synopic Gospel book, Matthew, Mark and Luke, they all record the same with what Jesus has said. You give them something to eat. It is a command from Jesus Christ. Why? Because there are many places if we don't go and help them. Many places, many people there, if we don't want to go and help them, we don't know when they will get help. Just then you saw some pictures. And I want to share a little bit of story. In 2006, when I went to uh, Guangxi province, I went to, we went to a village to, to uh, preach the gospel. And this village, they have got uh, seven uh, 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 idol temples at a, in the entrance of this little village. And when we went there to share the gospel, people tell us, we had enough. Because every month, twice every month, the local communist secretary, communist party secretary, would gather the whole village people and went there to worship the, the idols, at least these seven temples. They have to ensign and ensign and, and, and um, offer some, some things for them. And the problem is they said, they told us if we miss one, something terrible would happen. Once we miss one of the seven, and someone died in our village, once we miss another one, someone had cancer, someone has, had, has something, lost his arm or, or his leg. So we, we, we dare not to offend these temples. We had seven. We had enough. Please don't give us one more. So we have to explain to them, we come here to proclaim the salvation from Lord Jesus Christ. We're not going to give you another one of those. We are here to proclaim the, the salvation, the power of Lord who resurrected from the death. He will bring you from the darkness into the light, from the death into life. He will bring you out from the curse of the, the idol worship. You do not have to fear anymore. And they said, is that true? Once we become Christian, can we no longer worship those idols? We said, yes, that's true. Just then you saw some pictures. Uh, when, uh, 2007, I went to Xinjiang province. Xinjiang is northern, uh, northwest of China. It's at the border of, of uh, Pakistan, uh, Kazakhstan, Giazistan, those something stands. <laughs> it's very uh, isolated and remote place. And when we went there, it, it, even it, in uh, uh, 2007, because of the... Uh, the, the minority group issues. So China go Chinese government have very tightened control for that place. We went there to, to share the gospel, but we cannot share to the group. We have to do it one-on-one -on -one individual. 
Because if anyone heard, overheard and they reported, that person will be in big trouble, even till today. So one of them, after I shared the gospel with, them, with him, and he said to me, he said, brother, he called me brother because the person who brought me there called me brother. He said, brother, I have to tell you the truth. For four generations, from my great-grandfather until my generation, we never heard something, there's a God. We never go to visit a temple or anything like that. Now you try to tell me, you try to tell me there's a God, and we are sinners, and God has sent His Son die for us on the cross, and He tried to save us. You have to give me time to digest. You have to give me time to understand all these Un, un, uh, I cannot understand some things. What I experienced was those, there are many, many places if we do not go there to help them, we don't know when they will get help. So first is this command from Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, it is a test for the disciples. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. We think about back in 2,000 years in, in Israel. I just put myself into the disciples' shoes. If I'm one of the 12, what would be my response? Think of this, what, is, what will be your response? When I, whenever I think about this, I think I probably will say to my Lord Jesus, say, Lord, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? Such a great need. What do I have? Now, anybody would have common knowledge, would have common sense, knows that it is impossible for that command. The crowd is too large. The challenge is too great. And what resources would they have in such a remote place? Andrew, Simon's brother, he said, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? However, in the book of John, it says like this, John 6, 5, uh, uh, verse 5 and 6. Jesus said to Philip, Where are we going to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So this is a test for disciples. Remember, why did Jesus and his disciples come to this desol uh, desolate place, the remote place? Because the disciples were tired. Not only that, I believe the disciples were very hungry themselves. Because Jesus said, told the disciples, come away by yourselves to a desolated place and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. The disciples did, didn't even have time to eat. I think they were also very hungry. That's why the disciples ask, asked Jesus to send people away. Brothers and sisters, how often do we say in our hearts, and some, sometimes with your voice, something like this, like this. Send people away, the Lord. Send them away. There's not enough money or there, there aren't any enough resources for the need. Send people away, Lord. We have enough problems ourselves. 
I have only so many, so much resources, and I have reached my nim- limit. Jesus, we don't want to know these people. We are tired. We are stressed ourselves. But Jesus wants his disciples to understand his feeling. Jesus did not leave the problem to his disciples to, to, to tackle the problem themselves. Jesus wants his disciples to work with him. He wants us to get involved into his mission. He wants us to get involved in what he's about to do. Many times we were just like Philip. Many times we said in our heart, Lord, it is, we had enough. Send them away. But Jesus want, he wants us to get involved, to partnership with him. When we do this, he will open our eyes and see something we never saw. In 2006, remember I just mentioned the story, we went to that village in, in Guangxi province. So we were there for, th- for three days to share the gospel. And one day, uh, there's, a, there's, a young, uh, there's a mid-aged woman came to us and said to me, Teacher, you call me, she called me teacher, he said, Teacher, can you come to my house? And I said, I've got full schedules. What, what do you want me, why do you want me to go to your house? I said, my son needs gospel. What, what, why can't your son come to, come to us? And apparently we found that her son was, a, was paralyzed. He, he had some, some weird disease when he was as, two, as little as two, two year old. So he was paralyzed. And this family was so poor, they had no house to live. So you know where they stay? They stay under a bridge, the road bridge. Would you like to put on? Just then we missed the, the add on. You will see the picture, I'll keep going. So they, they only can live under a bridge. They've got no house to live. It's like this. You see the bridge there? They lived underneath. So we went there and, and proclaimed the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that, that should be all right. So we were there for, for 45 minutes to an hour. So we, when, I, when we came out from that place, and we found there was a big crowd gathering there, and we were surprised and we said, what, what are you guys doing here? And they said, so they said to us, what are you guys doing here? And we said, okay, because they, they, they didn't know us. So we, we went there quietly. We didn't tell anybody. I have, so we asked those crowd people, and how do you know that we are here? I want you to listen to this. If I was not there, I couldn't believe it. Someone, who, an, an old man in the crowd, who was not a Christian at all, and he told us this, Listen to this. He said, from far away, we saw angels about this place. We just come to see what is happening. We didn't know. We didn't know, I have to say, we didn't know at all. We were inside, under that bridge, proclaimed the Lord Jesus Christ. And those non-Christians, they told us, they saw angels about that place. Dear brothers and sisters, would you like to go out to preach the gospel? He, our Lord wants us to get involved in His mission work. So firstly, it is a command from Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, it's a test for His disciples. Thirdly, you give them something to eat. Jesus Christ himself is the provider. Verse 
36. And he said to them, Jesus said to his disciples, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And they went and had found out, they said, five and two fish. How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked his disciples, and go and look. To put this sense in today's context, this replace, uh, represents five small barley bread buns. It's not loaf, it's buns. And two probably preserved sardines. Not much at all, not much at all. However, I'm so convinced that even this boy with five small barley loaves and two small pickled fish and the crowd was not a coincidence. It was the Lord, the creator of the whole universe, who prearranged this boy among the crowds by his sovereignty. Then Jesus does something remarkable. He gives thanks for what he has been given. Then he does this miracle of multiplication. Using that what he was given, and he multiplies the fish and loaves to meet the need of many thousands. And the scripture says, all ate and were satisfied. And there are even enough for leftovers, 12 basket of leftovers. Remarkable. Give them something to eat. Again, sometimes we think, what do we have? We have not much. But Jesus asked his disciples, Behold, look up, look around yourselves. There's a great need there. Jesus himself is a provider. Are we going to submit ourselves into his sovereignty hand? We can record it when Jesus saw this crowd. He had compassion for them. Another place in the Bible says, When he saw the crowd, Jesus had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without shepherd. And then he said to to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Would you like to get involved in Lord's mission work? Or are we going to tell the Lord, Lord, send them away. Give them something to eat. When I was in China, I saw the great need there. And people are so hungry. I heard a story there was once a, a pastor went to China to do some training. And because of the place is so limited, this is a remote place. And by the way, I, I can tell people that often we go to the, in the middle place in the middle of nowhere to avoid the, the unnecessary trouble. So from time to time, uh, the training will be held in a, in a remote place. And there was once um, a Chinese pastor went there to teach, to teach some course. And the place can only hold up about 50. You know how many came? 200. These are all the church leaders, the pastors, the co-workers. And facing such a great need, 200 people come and ask for betra- to, to be trained. But the place, the, the small room can only hold up 50. So the decision has to be made. They come, these people come from far away. 
So there's a requirement. Overnight, if you can memorize the book of Philippians, memorize every single word, not a single word missed, you'll be qualified to come to the training for the next uh, four days. And the next morning, guess how many people qualified? 52. Not a single word missed. Okay, so the training started. And until the afternoon, this pastor went out to get some rest, to get some fresh air. And there were two Chinese pastors who were still, they, they were not qualified, but they don't want to go away. And so they stay and ask for help. Says, pastor, you have to help us. There were two there. Why? Because they said, if, you don't, if we don't get trained, we, cannot, we won't be able to help other people. So this pastor asked these two uh, local pastors and said, how many people you ship it? He said, well, we normally go to many churches during the week. If you want me to add it all up, probably more than 2,000. But you see, uh, the seats are, are limited and already, you know, it can only hold up 50 people. And what I'm talking about, 50 people, is not just like that. Many times when I go to China, people just sit in front of me, just sit right here because the place is so, so small. I said, Pastor, can I tell you a story? We went through a difficult time before. In about 1950s, China had a, had a f uh, fathom. They got nothing to eat. As I, I can, Pastor, can I tell you a story? During that time, there was a, a mother uh, with a little baby in her hand. All the other family members were starved dead. They're all dead. So we went out, begged for help. So one day the mother could not go anymore. She was about to die. The last thing this mother can do was smash the bowl in her hand. This is a mother, last thing she can do. She cut her own breath and let the baby suck her breath because she has got nothing to feed the baby. And uh, uh, people walked past, found this thing. They were surprised. How come a little, little vampire sucking a, a, a bleeding breast? So people helped this mother and baby, and the baby survived. And this pastor, one of the two pastors, told this trainer, the Chinese pastor, he said, you know why? I am that baby. He said, now, every week I have to face 2,000 people ask to be taught. If I don't get training, how am I supposed to help these people? So, it was by the God's grace, those people who stay for the next four days training. It is a training for the disciples. That comes to our fourth point. Fourthly, give them something to eat. It is training for the disciples. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up and gave thanks. And he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples passed on to those people who were in need. Here are a few things should catch our attention. Firstly, after Jesus gave thanks, he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And this miracle of Jesus feeding the multitude. The responsibilities of the disciples were very simple. To pass on the blessings they have received 
to the people who were in need. Very simple. It is a training. Jesus gave thanks, break the bread, pass on to the disciples. What did disciples do? They just distribute. Secondly, the disciples were participating in the whole process of this remarkable, remarkable miracle. The disciples helped to organize the people sit down in order. They helped to distribute the loaves and the fish. And they were ordered by the Lord to gather the leftover piece, pieces into 12 baskets. Jesus, our Lord, would like to give us the opportunity to participate in his work in this world. The question is, are you prepared? Are we prepared to participate? Thirdly, there's a new experience for the disciples who witnessed what it was Jesus who took that was so little to multiply to meet a need that, humanly speaking, his disciples could have never done. What a lesson of faith that the disciples were taught. At the same scale, what a lesson of faith is he trying to teach us today? What do we have? Probably we don't have much. But the question is, are we willing to give out what we have, such a, so little, to the, to the hands of Lord of whole, uh, the creation, the Lord of whole universe? He is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Humanly speaking, it is correct. Anyone who had a common knowledge, you don't have to go through a, a master of accounting to do the calculation. It is impossible to feed so many people. However, the scripture also tells us for if the wi uh, willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one has not. If we have, maybe just a little, you want to give surrender to the Lord's hand, as little as two, uh, five small bread buns and two Sardines. Lord is, the Lord is the provider. Miracle was performed by the Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples only participate in the whole process. It's a training. It's a training for them. Many people asked me during the 10 years period, Charlie, you must be very wealthy. I said, I am and spiritually. Do you have much money? I said, I don't have much money. But my Lord, he has. If you don't have so much, why do you keep going to those places to try to help those people? I say, you're wrong. It's not me trying to help other people. I'm just simply obey my Lord's command. I just go out and do what he tried to do through me. From time to time, uh, those places, people from those places I visited, and they said, oh, thank you, brother, who come to, to visit us. And I said to them, you are wrong. It's not me who wants to come to help you. I, I have nothing to help you out. Remember this, I only come to, to show you that Lord Jesus Christ, who's care about you. Because in the Bible, I call it, there's an unreasonable math, unreasonable mathematics. Jesus said, I tell you that 
to everyone, everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. How can you do the mathematics? It is unreasonable mathematics. As a matter of fact, by going to many places, I actually the one who was encouraged. I was the one who was taught. I was the one who witnessed what God has done in many, many places. It's not me. It is Him. I believe um, no matter it was Sherry who went to Africa for her mission trip or the team of Jesus' young followers from this church to Quran and Philippines, for their, for their short mission trips, they would have the same experience as mine. So, Give them something to eat. It is a command from Jesus Christ. It's a test for his disciples. Jesus himself is the provider. And fourthly, it is a training for his disciples. To conclude the, sh the message I want to share, I want to point it out there twice in the book of John, Jesus twice mentioned, while is the Day, while is light. Jesus encouraged, urged his disciples to do something while it is still possible. And John chapter 9, verse 4 to 5, it says like this. John chapter 9, 4 to 5. We must, uh, we must work the work of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus urged his disciples to work while it is, it is day. To have the sense of urgency. We cannot sit here and do nothing forever. Have the sense of urgency. Go out and work. We must work the works of Him who sent me, who sent Jesus Christ. Another place, John chapter 12, 35 to 37. Thirty-five. So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the lights. Lest dusk overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. Jesus urged his disciples to have the sense of direction. Follow the light. Follow the, follow the calling and the, the, the urge from Holy Spirit among us in our heart. Well, here we don't have to go out to the remote place, to the rural area, to travel thousands of miles to preach the gospel or on the mission work. Here we can share the gospel, share our sell the, the personal testimonies to the people, our neighbors who are close to us. A lot of people, even sometimes the Christian, turn their blind eyes, pretend that they do not see. They just live in a, in a simple uh, Christian lives. They don't share the gospel to anyone else at all. Even some churches, 
They wanted, they have the willing to get involved, but only go on a surface level. They, they, they're more focused on their own agenda rather than God's will. It is sad, isn't it? But I, I believe the Lord of the harvest will send out workers to the field of the harvest with or without our involvement. But he has given us the opportunity to get involved, to be partnership with him, to witness his amazing work for those places which they never heard of gospel. I hope that today, Lord, again, he's saying, give them something to eat to every one of us. And hopefully, it's become an encouragement for you and me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again. You are the God of creation. And you are the God who cared about everyone. You want everyone to hear the gospel. To become a, a Christian. To receive the Holy Spirit. To become your child. Lord, we thank you for your mission work in this world. And give us the, given us the opportunity to participate, to get involved into your mission work. Lord, I praise you. Praise you that the work you have done through many missionaries who go out to the remote, to the rural area to preach the gospel. And Lord, I pray that today's scripture, the word you said to the disciples, give them something to eat, will become the encouragement for each and every one of us. Thank you, my Lord. We pray in your name. Amen.